Hello again and welcome to the corner studio here in my garage and I see from my high-tech teleprompter here that it is time for Friday evening camera talk. This is episode number 33. Uh, I got out an art video this week and uh, it's the video that's in my uploads right before this one and I think I posted it yesterday at some point. I'm a little bleary-eyed because the thing took two days, two parts of two days to shoot. I was on the computer editing for two or three hours and it ended up being almost an hour long segment. So uh, if any of you guys on the camera side of the channel are interested in that, it's been posted. Um, I also will say that uh, I'm doing this segment a little bit backwards tonight because I usually prep the clips you know, when I uh, introduce a segment and I say, let's look at the clips, I already will have them and I've made a note to myself to, to do an intro for them. And tonight I haven't prepped anything. And typically, uh, here lately, somebody on the channel asks, uh, when exactly are you putting your program up? Uh, lately, I have been shooting for uh, posting this on Thursday evening, uh, usually after 9 o'clock, so that the people who are on East Coast U.S. could theoretically, uh, just after midnight, they could watch Friday evening camera talk on a Friday if they wanted to. And that's what I'm shooting for here lately, is uh, putting it up Thursday evening for people to watch Friday. But um, Anything can happen going forward if I get behind schedule and I still have to go in and um, find the clips that I'm going to be <laughs> introducing tonight and put them together. But I have them on the computer. They've been shot. I just uh, haven't assembled them. So uh, let's get the ball rolling on tonight's program by um, introducing our what's in the bag segment. So we'll have a quick look at that. All right, it's time for the what's in the bag segment, and I had the bag on the tripod before. Every time I've gone to pull it off, I end up having trouble getting the thing to clear the um, three-way head there, so I just left the bag off. We'll just talk about the tripod. This is, of course, a Gitso Mountaineer 2. Um, this is their three-way uh, head, and the kit that I bought is uh, b and 50th anniversary kit. It uh, comes with a ball head, so you get three pieces in the kit. I encourage people to go and look on B&H's site if you're curious about the pricing or the particulars on this outfit. It's on sale right now. It's uh, got a big reduction in price, and uh, yes, I fell for it because I have a weakness for tripods, and I'm hoping that this purchase finally will kind of uh, settle some of my tripod angst. And uh, the ball head, I'll run a short clip of it, but we've already taken that and put it on uh, one of our tripods that we use out in the field. I'm so confident that it's going to be a wonderful addition. This one is probably going to be in around the property and for short walks uh, type of thing because it's so light and uh, we just don't know yet. Uh, it's literally one day out of the box, so as I do on the channel, when I know more about this and I've used it a little more, I will bring it back on the channel and we'll talk more about it. I think the build is pretty good, and so far just tinkering with this here in the studio, I'm super pleased with the uh, prospect this thing offers. So um, anyhow, back to the main segment. And we're looking at the Getso ball head that came with the kit. And I've got a Z9 with the 600 millimeter lens on there. And the two seem like they work pretty well together, just preliminary testing. All right, so uh, we just saw the what's in the bag segment. And uh, there'll be more to follow on the Getso equipment and uh, have high hopes for it right now. Can't really say that I know very much about using it because it's only been in hand for about a, a day now. Um, I'll, uh, ha I'll be forced to, I'll just warn everybody, I'll be forced to do another uh, tripod roundup here in a few weeks probably, uh, maybe a month or so, and uh, that gives everybody something to look forward to, and uh, usually when I do those, it's like spring uh, cleaning, I'll end up losing five or ten subscribers uh, when I post one of those, but uh, we're going to do it anyway because I like talking about tripods. Um, Hummingbird Report, I promised to uh, check in with you guys and uh, tell you about the Hummingbird Report. I'm getting feeders here emptied and a couple of them that I have out that are the one quart size, 
they're getting emptied about every day and a half and I'm not seeing the swarms of hummingbirds so much attacking them from all one side but just steady traffic in and out. Tells me there's a lot of hummingbirds in the area but um, there's not a lot of good shooting right now because we have all these we have a lot of cloudy days and uh, we just come out of about 12 hours of a sheet of rain so um, I'll get to those hummingbird uh, clips when I can we'll have some for the for the uh, Friday evening camera talk and I'll probably post some freestanding ones maybe on the channel also I want to talk about the um, I had a problem with the sensor and it wasn't a serious problem. I was noticing some spots in some clips that I took. There was one spot that was kind of up toward the right center and another one that was kind of down low that was kind of pronounced on the left side and you might see some in a clip that I'm going to drop here in a few minutes but um, I opened the um, after seeing those on the computer I opened the um, took the lens off and looked at the uh, sensor and uh, I could not see anything. I took one of my um, dust blower, blew it off, put the lens back on. I actually wiped the lens off first, put the lens back on, did some more shooting and um, they were still there. So, um, you know, I did a sensor clean, you know, with the menu and I was kind of just looking around starting to wonder and it's like it dawned on me, okay, even though you can't see on the sensor and when I when I held the camera under the light and kind of tilted it um, I could see nothing on the sensor and I got out one of these kits that I I was reluctant to clean the Z8 but it needed it and um, this was the VSGO brand that I introduced on the channel a few months back and I had it in the cabinet and I said all right I'm going to do it so I put a couple of drops on one of the swabs followed the directions on the back and took the camera out and did some test uh, photos again and the spots were all gone so I roll, I feel like I rolled the dice it makes me nervous to mess with that sensor at all and it needed cleaning so I had to do it and it, it turned out uh, turned out well so um, let's lead into uh, I mentioned that there may be a couple of spots on some of the clips we're about to look at I hope if there are you can bear with them um, this is an area called the uh, Skagit Wildlife Area Samish Unit and people around here refer to it as East 90 and West 90. Now East 90 is um, refers to the 90 degree turns in the road and if you imagine a big end of a rectangle the West 90 uh, area has a good parking lot and the East 90 area has got a road that leads into the little town of Edison and what I'm going to do is uh, show you some some clips of that area just the general area now the uh, West 90 has got a parking area and big fields around with a lot of space uh, people go out there hunters uh, bird watchers photographers dog walkers it's a, it's a it's a great area but you notice I didn't put it in the title um, is a searchable term. We're, we're just talking about it here amongst the channel because I'm not encouraging, you know, it, they're fairly, they can be fairly busy places sometimes. Uh, people particularly go there looking for eagles, raptors of all kinds, um, short-eared owls. There's, there's all kinds of stuff there, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'll, I'll drop some clips in so you get a feel for the area and it's a place that we go sometimes and I'll put some clips in of the little town of Edison that's beyond kind of a little historic small town with a, a couple a few restaurants and um, you know some small businesses and whatnot but uh, why don't we take a look at those now and uh, we'll be right back
So you just got to see one of the places that we go to on our, our circuit of uh, places that we like to go out in the field. And um, I will say this part of the country, Western Washington State, we got a lot of uh, really neat and interesting public land up here. It, it's really a great resource to kind of live nearby. And uh, I don't mind on the channel here with my regular viewer sharing these spots. I'm not going to put them, you know, in the search terms uh, to try to, you know, attract un unwarranted attention so we'll just share them here amongst ourselves and as the season progresses I'll um, sometimes tell you where I'm going or, or where the clips are from rather than just just being a total mystery how they're produced um, we've got our uh, little game that we can play tonight our composition game good better best and uh, what I'm going to do is a uh, for those of you who haven't seen it before, we'll look at some different scenarios and the first one will be good, the second one better, and the third one best, at least according to my opinion. And if you've got a difference of opinion, drop it down in the comments and explain what's going on. But uh, we've got enough to do a few of these, good, better, best on the composition. And we're going to end the program that way tonight. I want to thank everybody for showing up and uh, we hope to see you again in another uh, episode of Friday Evening Camera talk. So till then, take care.